Hey everyone, hope your day is going well. I'm back with another video. And in today's video, I thought we would take a look at something that's just purely for fun. And that is using some of the tools uh, that you can kind of get pretty easy access to uh, through the viewer, uh, at least through a third party viewer, um, to do a bit of automation for your second life. Uh, so what we're going to look at today is how to make use of RLV, the open collar scripts, and then we'll talk a little bit about um, why I'm using a collar in a minute um, and, and what that means for those of you who maybe don't want to do that. And then also gestures inside of the viewer to provide some sort of quick automation for things that you uh, might want to do uh, as you go about your day. Uh, so let's really quickly address the whole open collar thing. Um, so RLV re needs a relay in order to work. Uh, the relay basically intercepts commands that come in through chat and are sent to the viewer and then the viewer does something with them. It can do lots and lots of different things, but you need to have that relay in place so that the viewer understands what it is that you want to do and that it can interact with your actual avatar and world. Uh, I'm setting this up to work with the open collar scripts. In fact, the number nine peanut version of open collar. Um, if you're not using that one, this may not work for you. Uh, so uh, you'll want to check out the link that I'll provide in the description for where you can go get a free version of the collar or update your existing collar to work with that version um, if it's not already. Um, but it will require that version to get through all of this. Um, Anyway, it, this doesn't have anything to do with any of the adult side of Second Life. As a matter of fact, uh, RLV, and, and even to some extent some of the things that callers can do, are sort of always assumed to deal with the adult side of Second Life, but they really don't have to. Uh, most of my videos talk about wardrobe, and as we know, wardrobe is a tool that utilizes RLV to dress and undress my avatar or your avatar uh, in world, and there's lots you can do with it. So I thought it'd be just kind of fun to look at using these three things together to do some fun things. Uh, so let's get into it, and I'll kind of show you what I have set up, and I've been working with these for a little while and just kind of playing with them on and off. Uh, so they're already set up for me, but I'll show you how I set them up and you can use them for whatever you want to do. So the first thing I want to look at is how I can add and remove things from my avatar just by typing in a really quick command into local chat uh, that other people won't see. And I thought for the example um, I would use, and I've used, had this set up for a little while, uh, is um, to add and remove the bubble gum that comes with the catwalk head or that you can get for the catwalk head. Uh, you can get bubble gum, you can get lollipops, you can get sexy lollipops, you can get all sorts of different things. Uh, pretty much lots of different things that can go into your mouth and you can either hold them there or chew them or whatever you want to do with them. So what I've done under my RLV folder is I have this other folder here called Fast Access. And my Fast Access folder is a combination of things I use in my wardrobe and what I'm about to show you today to just give me sort of fast access to things that otherwise might be buried throughout my inventory. So I end up creating a few extra items here, but it's actually kind of fun to play with it. Uh, and underneath my fast access, I have this other folder here called Mouthies. And what I've done under here is I've just created some simple folders, one called Chew Gum, and I put the link to my Catwa Bubble Gum in there, and one called Lolly, and I put my link to my Lollipop in there, and one called Sexy Lolly, and I put my link to the Sexy Lollipop in there. So you can put in here any set of folders you want, and you can use them any way you want. And you'll notice I've just put Put links in here. Uh, you could put the actual items, but I think it's easier to put links, especially with the ability for the viewer to replace links when updates come out. Uh, it's just a really nice, easy way to do it. So I've got this chew gum folder here. Now, if you have, and you have to be wearing a collar for this to work, or wearing the open collar for this to work as well, because we're going to use some of their commands. But if you go out to the open collar webpage, and I'll include this link as well. They do a great job of describing for you all the different things that you can do while you're using their collar and in turn their RLV relay. So underneath the RLV menu on this website, we can see we have some commands here that relate to folders and outfits and the relay. And in this case, I want to look at the controls that work with folders. 
And this kind of goes through and it has a lot of setup in here. And again, it is kind of adult related, but basically what it's telling me that is if I type in my prefix, which is the uh, first two letters of your name typically, uh, but you can change that with your collar, and then a plus sign and a folder name, it will actually wear that folder. And if I put in a minus sign in the folder name, it'll actually remove that folder. And the same thing holds true if I want to add a folder or remove a whole bunch of folders. But I can use these text commands along with my collar to put something on. So we're going to use this to automatically, or to create a gesture basically that will automatically put this gum on for us. So let me go down to my gestures quick. Here's my gestures folder in inventory right here. And I've got this folder here called automation. And I've created some of these here for us already. Uh, but we're going to look at this one here called Chew Gum. And I'm going to right click on that and open it so we get our gesture window here. Now in the gesture window, uh, you're going to give it a description. I called it Chew Gum. The trigger is really important. You're going to put a forward slash and then whatever you want to type into local chat to get this to work. The nice thing about including this trigger with the forward slash is that it will automatically or should automatically complete it for you in the viewer. So it makes it really easy to find out what these were. Now, when you're creating a new gesture, you're going to see a whole bunch of things that are in the steps, or actually not a whole bunch, there's two or three things in steps already. You want to remove whatever's there to default, okay? And we'll just go ahead and remove these here, pretend like those were the defaults. And we're going to add a chat command. So we're going to click chat and choose add. Now, we're going to start off what to say with a slash one. What the slash one says is, hey, open caller, um, listen to this, but we're not actually going to put it out into local chat for everyone to see. So we're going to type slash one and then a space. And then I'm going to type a BP because BP is my prefix. Um, and this is something I've changed to customize for me, but you can have uh, your default prefix or whatever your prefix is. And I may do another video that kind of talks through how to set up a collar to make this a little easier. But for those of you who have already done it, this is how it's there. So slash one BP, which is my prefix, I'm going to say plus. And then what I want to do is I want to include the name of this folder, chew gum. Okay, plus chew gum. And I'm going to go ahead and click save. So if I click this and I click preview, it should put that gum on. And that's it. So now I'm blowing bubbles. Now, you can add additional chat commands in here, and you can have you know it, it say something in local chat. You can have it say, hey, I'm starting to chew gum, you know, whatever you want it to do. But the core of what we're getting at right here is this. I want to be able to take this gum off, or put this gum on, I mean. All right, so we've got that gesture, and that's how that works. Now, I want to show you another one I created here, and this one's called Spit Out. Now, you'll notice that I actually have in this mouthies folder Chew Gum Lolly Sexy Lolly. And I could put in all sorts of things, you know, that you might have that, that you can wear on your mouth. There's all sorts of mouth attachments in Second Life. Um, but I don't want to create both an add and a remove for each and everything that's in here. So what I did was I went ahead and I created one called spit out. And if I open up this gesture here, you'll see that I've got a slightly different thing. In the chat, I'm going to put in minus one, again, or slash one, I mean, that hides it, uh, BP, which is my prefix. And then I put in minus minus mouthies. And if you remember from looking at this open collar, minus minus says removes this folder and all of its subfolders. And so this time I said, go ahead and remove everything that's in this mouthies folder, okay? Or any of its subfolders. So I have this here, if I go ahead and click preview, it's gonna go ahead and take that gum off. Now it also, when I remove that gum, also sort of messes up my sitting animation. So let's go ahead and set that down, okay. Anyway, so, with these two gestures, I can go ahead and switch this gum on and off. I don't need to go to my wardrobe. I don't need to go to my inventory. I can just open up local chat, and I can type in slash, and I can start typing chew, and you'll notice there at the bottom that it automatically fills in chew gum as I start typing it. I hit enter, and it puts that gum back on. And I can start typing spit out, and it will remove that, make me float again, and spit my gum out. So that's one thing that we can do with this. Um, and again, it's just a way that if you want to wear and unwear things. Now, you may be asking, what can this all be used for? This exact same technique can be used for anything you don't want to wear all the time. So when we talk about um, 
things that you wear on your mouth, if you have a, a hat or some sort of an accessory that you sometimes carry but you don't want to always carry it, you can do that. This works for HUDs. It works for really anything you can think of. As a matter of fact, I have this folder here called My HUDs, and I have all these HUDs listed in here, and I can use the same text commands to add and remove these from my avatar. Um, now you don't have to do these with a gesture. You could actually just type them in. That same command that we typed into that gesture window could just be typed in um, to your local chat and it would work. Uh, all right, so that's one thing you can do. You can add and then remove items from your avatar very quickly. I want to look at another use case for that very same thing. And that is, if I come up here, back into my fast access folder, I have this one called Lara Body Fix. Now, if you wear a mesh body, and you teleport around a lot, or you cam in and out a lot, chances are at some point you've had your body break on you, where the mesh starts to break down and you look like your body's kind of all cracked and broken. And there are two sort of quick ways to fix that. One is to completely relog, and the second one is to remove your mesh body and add it back on. That's much faster than relogging. So what I've done is I've created a folder in my fast access called Lara Body Fix, and I've just put a link in there to my mesh body. And I've got, down under my gestures, one called Lara Body Fix. And if we open that and look at it, I'm basically doing the same thing here. I'm saying, hey, go ahead and remove this Lara Body Fix folder. And then I have it waiting two seconds because we want to give it time to process and actually remove the body. Um, because some, sometimes when it's laggy, it will run them too fast and it, and it won't actually truly re-add it. And then the second command is just to put it back on. So if I preview this now, it's going to take my body off, wait a couple seconds, and then it's going to put my body back on. And that toggling of your body will actually fix, in almost every case, that broken body look. So if you're out and about and you're having that problem, this is a really fast and easy way to get that fixed. And again, I just put in this slash fix my body. So if I want to run it, I don't have to go into my gestures. I can just come to my local chat, type slash fix my body, and it does it for me. I don't have to worry about it. Don't have to do anything. Don't have to go into my inventory and find my mesh body and all my folders. It's just there and gets it done. So that's another use for for this sort of technique for automating what you're doing. Um, let's do a couple of things that are very specific to the open collar system. Uh, and these are actually things I think you can find and read about and, and they're sort of tips I think I got directly from the open collar website and from talking to people in the group there. Uh, but I thought I'd include them here because they are sort of nice tricks. Uh, so one that's kind of fun is one of the apps that you can get for Open Collar, and I think it comes as a default, I'm pretty sure, is called the Titler. And you see these sometimes, these are titles that float above people's heads. Uh, the nice thing about this though is that you can kind of control what they are and there's lots of different things that you can do with them uh, in terms of color and things like that. Um, and, and you can create sort of clever titles that you can switch on and off. One of the fun ones that you can do is you can create sort of meters that show like what percentage of something you are. So I happen to, if you know me, be sort of a little bit of a gotcha addict. So I created one here called Gotcha Addict. And if I open this up, you can see again, we've just got a really simple chat command. Slash one, buttercup princess, BP, space graph, 100, gosh addict. And so what this is gonna do is this tells it to put this title on my avatar. So if I preview it here, you can see it puts this bar up my head, 100% gosh addict. Just for kind of fun, right? Uh, and it's super easy to create and use. Um, and you can create a whole bunch of these for whatever mood you're in. If you're at a club and you wanna wear your club hover text, if you're, playing a game and you want to play your game hover text or if you just want to be fun you can do that. I also created one called title off. I can go ahead and type that into local hero title off and it just gets rid of whatever's up there. And again if you look in my gestures I open that up and you can see um, oh I didn't give it a name. There we go. Title off. It uses the trigger of title off and again it's just using this command. And all these commands are easy to find if you just kind of start poking around through all the different options that are out here on this website. Now one of the other things that you can do, which is kind of fun, uh, is, and I don't remember where exactly it is on here, I think it's under animations, yeah, it's under animations. 
And one of the things that they've added, and the reason that you want to have um, the most recent version of the um, scripts, is that they have a built-in hover height adjustment to it. And I did this a little bit differently. Uh, let me go ahead and save that and close that down. I've created three gestures here. And these are hover reset, hover down, and hover up. So let me go ahead and stand up here. And we're gonna go ahead and look at hover up for a second. I'll go ahead and open this. And basically I've assigned a slash HU trigger to it. I don't really use that too much because I've also given it a shortcut key, shift F8. And basically again, I've got my text, te uh, text chat command here, hover up. And what I can do, if I click on preview, you'll notice that I go up a little bit. And let me actually just go ahead and open up my hover height box here so you can see it. So every time I click on this, I go up by 0 0.01 or 0 0.02, I think it is. Yeah, 0 0.02. So I'm slowly increasing my hover height. And like I said, I have these bound to the keyboard. So if I open up my hover down, you can see that it's set to Shift F7. If I press Shift F7 on my keyboard, I go back down. And I actually have reset set, set to shift F9. So when I click that, it just sets me right back down to zero. So a lot of times when you put something on or you go someplace and, and their floors are a little bit off, you need to adjust your hover height. So this is a quick way if you're wearing that collar to go in and adjust it without always having to go into the slider and, and to make adjustments to it. And of course, all of these things could be triggered together. You could create, you know, if you had a particular pair of shoes that you wanted to wear, and you always know that you have to set your offset to, you know, three because they're really, really high or something like that. You could create one of these gestures, uh, create a subfolder in your RLV and put a, you know, a shortcut to those, those boots or those shoes or those heels or whatever they are into there. And you can create a gesture that puts those boots on and also adjust your hover height the way it's supposed to be all in one quick gesture. Anyway, so this is kind of a pretty different video from what I usually do. Um, and, and I think I will go ahead and create a really quick sort of getting started with open collar video as well. So for those of you who may not be used to doing that, you'll get a chance to see it. But this is just sort of a way to start thinking about the tools that are in the viewer, tools that you can easily attach to your avatar, um, and just start providing some automation and some fun ways to think about um, getting things done um, as you're just going about your day. One thing I will note, you'll notice that uh, I, I am wearing my necklaces, but these are not the collars. Uh, in fact, um, the collar I'm wearing is always hidden. I, I don't wear it for that purpose. I really only wear it for, for this sort of automation purpose. Uh, and pretty much every collar can be worn and completely hidden so nobody knows that you're wearing it and, and can be set up so that it can be hidden. So certainly this isn't something that you have to be in the adult or BDSM community to use. Anybody can use this. Nobody has to know you're doing it. In fact, uh, I think there is a, a couple of you know, air quote collars out on Marketplace now, which are nothing more than some prims that sit inside your body that no one ever sees. They don't even sit on your neck at all. Uh, they're very low uh, at rendering complexity because they are just very simple, plain prims that are invisible. Um, and, and they do the job of sort of integrating all of this stuff together. So, um, so that's the video. Um, I hope this is interesting to people. It gives you some thoughts, gets you just thinking about the types of things that you can do uh, and play with uh, in the viewer and with RLV and everything else. Um, and maybe, maybe gives you a chance to, um, you know, have some fun and do some things that you may not normally have been able to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my gum back on here and sit in my chair and uh, blow some bubbles. And until next time, uh, enjoy your second life and uh, be back at you with another video soon. Thanks.